on Facebook, and that's the extent of my technological uh, know-how. Are we on? We are good. Excellent. So welcome to Workspace's monthly Beer and Business, which is a networking happy hour. Um, we keep it to an hour because we want you to come by here from 5 to 6, maybe get a tour of our co-working and meeting space, and then go uh, have dinner at one of the restaurants on Main Street. I like to describe Main Street Manchester as mini Epcot. We have uh, fabulous Italian restaurants, including Mulberry Pizza, which is one of the sponsors of this evening. We have um, a new Ethiopian place, a seafood place is coming in. There's Thai, there's Vietnamese. Japanese, a Cuban bakery, Main Street adjacent is a vegetarian restaurant. Anything that I'm missing? Lucky Taco, Lucky Taco which just expanded and hopefully will sponsor a future uh, beer and business. The Market on Main, which is a general market but ha makes uh, good sandwiches. Uh, Highland Park also isn't on Main Street, but they're one of our um, regular sponsors, so we like to give them a plug too. And then a lot of places for great beverages. There's a smoothie place around the corner. Uh, Mulberry has a, a hoppin' bar, and then we've got places not really as adjacent, but like Athletic Brewing, uh, which, do you have a place for, a bar for people to come and enjoy your product? Here, introduce yourself. I think it's on. Cool. I'm uh, Bill from Athletic Brewing Company. Yes, we have a tap room down at our brewery in Stratford, Connecticut. Yep. Excellent. So how far away is that from here? Um, I believe it's about an hour. But the good news is you don't need a designated driver because Athletic Brewing is all non-alcoholic. Correct. Yeah. So we'll start with um, you and how you got involved in the brewing slash non-alcoholic brewing business. Well, uh, thank you, and thank you to Workspace for having me here tonight uh, to share our beers. Um, yeah, it's kind of a non-traditional entrance to the brewing world. Um, I was in the finance industry for the prior 12 years, uh, working at a hedge fund in Stanford. Um, it sounds like fun. Yeah, it was uh, very little fun. <laughs> Definitely not very personally rewarding. Um, but as I was getting more healthy and active, being more mindful of what I consume, taking my career more seriously. Um, alcohol didn't really have a, as much a place in that anymore. And I wondered why there were no decent non-alcoholic options at bars and restaurants. And it, eventually that question led to tinkering, led to textbook reading, and two years later I ended up retiring from my financial job to do this full time. Um, I teamed up with a really talented head brewer who I brought the science to. Um, and we built a brewery around our process and his recipes, and uh, we just launched four months ago. Congratulations. It's, that's why I love talking to entrepreneurs, because it's so interesting. Different people's life experience, point of views, get you to different places. Because when I'm looking for a non-alcoholic beverage, I immediately go to a milkshake, but that didn't, that didn't occur to <laughs> you. Uh, I like those. Uh. Okay. So um, now we have Bob here, and you've been, you also had a successful career in the corporate world in addition to your uh, restaurant tiering. So can you give us a little yep. breakdown I of that? I retired September 1st after 30 years with a company called Sodexo, which is the 10th largest employer in the world that nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> and, uh, I was in a wide variety. I was with them since 1989, and I took a year off to do some other stuff back in the 90s. But pretty straightforward. And then about 15 years ago, my wife and I decided that um, we wanted to do something independently and uh, on our own. So we started Mulberry Street. And uh, it uh, was original, the original location was if you go down Main Street, go over the bridge and head toward the country club, there's a little storefront on the right. We were there for about three years and we outgrew that very quickly and then decided to come down to Main Street. So. I've been in the food business since I was 13 at Willie's Steakhouse. Wow. Yeah, anybody here remember Willie's? They yeah. had great grilled yes, uh, macaroni and cheese. Yeah. Yeah. potatoes. Yeah, and a hip steak. Um, but that's where I started. So. And uh, Bob is very involved in the community, often um, giving away his time and his pizza, which we appreciate. And there's for people who are here, 
There is pizza in the back, and for people who are on Facebook, there's pizza all the time, yes, uh, except Mondays at uh, Mulberry Street. So um, you spoke, giving of your t gave of your time on Monday morning, you spoke to a group of high school students that we were bringing through to talk to different Main Street business owners, and uh, Workspace was their home base for the day. Uh, but we went to visit you, and you told them about, in retrospect, how wise it was to start small. Can you say a little bit for business well, owners? Well, we, we, when we started Mulberry Street, we had never run an, our, our own business. We'd run businesses, and I'd been involved. I think the, the key thing from a food standpoint um, is that, uh, you know, you hear that, that old story, eight out of ten restaurants fail in the first two years. That's because, in my own opinion, about eight out of ten restaurant tours shouldn't be in the business. If, if they know what they're doing, um, it's a pretty good business if you know how to cook and you can and you put, provide a good atmosphere and good service. It'll work. Um, I think the most important thing I did was I waited till I was 46 years old to start my own business. I spent a long time in everything from sales to um, and this is for Sodexo. Um, to, I was in the finance department for a while. I was a chef for them, um, and then the last 15 years I spent in logistics and procurement, and then the last three uh, I spent. All I did was I went around the country and read contracts. It's amazing what how many what you can learn from reading the contract that somebody signed and that nobody's looked at for the last five years. So I, I would look at contracts and I would determine what, and mostly hospitals, and I would determine what uh, we were doing that we shouldn't be, or vice versa. And um, when you learn all the stuff in the background of business, um, all the stuff that nobody really wants to talk about. Um, and it's not fun. Then when it gets to the food part, the food part kind of comes along easily. So. Very good. And for people who are interested in starting their own business, Manchester has a lot of services here. The head of uh, economic planning and development, Gary Anderson, is here in the room because he supports professional uh, networking and development that we're trying to create here in downtown. Housed upstairs in our building is a small business development center, and they'll make sure that you have the business plan you need to have to um, open and grow a business. And I've done some business coaching <laughs> in my life as well and realized that most of the people who fail, actually it's not because they fail because they can't get off the ground, it's they fail because they grow too fast. So you as a new business, what are you doing to um, make sure that you, you know, initially profitable enough so you can get to the long, the long term? Yeah, I think I would like to echo a lot of the lessons that um, you just stated, but to build on that also is to really make sure you are keeping a lean overhead structure and that things are scalable and will grow in line with your profits, where, or at least your top line, where um, everything from your software solutions up to your personnel and like terms like commission structures and your footprint, and that's why spaces like this are so great because you can keep your overhead low and grow into more space and interact with more people in the community. Um, yeah, in terms of growth and growing the right way, there are definitely great resources in the community and the state, and they've been a huge help um, in terms of getting the business off the ground the right way. And I'm really not ashamed to admit when I don't know anything about knowing anything, and it's amazing how many people are open to helping people starting businesses out there. And ultimately what you foresee the challenges of your business are, like for ours, it was how to make a good tasting non-alcoholic craft beer. We thought that was going to be 90% of the challenge, and it ended up being about 10% of the challenge. And all our day-to-day -day stuff is unforeseen things that seem crazy at the time, and in hindsight, they're not. You just have to keep a cool head and make sure you're planning and looking three to six months out, not going over your skis, just growing where there is like very clear demand and not just pushing your products out there. How do you push your products um, out there? Um, we had a busy summer. We, um, not a lot of people are walking into the supermarket and seeing what's new on the non-alcoholic beer shelf because there have not been any new products back there in over 30 years, which is pretty wild. Uh, so we hit the road this summer pretty hard. Um, we sponsored over 65 athletic events and attended beer festivals all summer. Uh, just pouring out free samples at the finish lines um, all over our community and then up and down the East Coast uh, just to generate more awareness. Um, but it's been really fun talking to people about the summer. 
So I don't know if it's clear, but I'm not an athlete, nor am I a beer drinker. But when you finish a race, are you craving a cold beer? It, beer actually has a lot of very rehydrating, healthy benefits to it. Um, it's, they've got tons of electrolytes, vitamin B, D, potassium, calcium, iron. Uh, a lot of things are naturally very rehydrating and refreshing. So you can definitely do a lot worse. It's not a like immediate boost that's gonna like strengthen you, but it is refreshing and just like having these light refreshing beers in your lifestyle could be like an incremental positive choice over longer periods of time too. Very nice. Um, Bill mentioned at the start, because a lot of people I meet are interested in being an entrepreneur because they want to work alone. So can you say something about how how much alone time there is when you're running your yeah, own business? My, my wife definitely wants to work alone. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's uh, the, the last month has been interesting because for the last well, six to eight weeks, I've been, for the first time in my life, I don't get up in the morning and drive to Simsbury. Um, so work, working alone, I don't know. It's, um, it's, it's interesting. We have 42 employees, and they run the range from you know, highly competent, to, and that doesn't, I'm not talking about the level and where they work in the organization. I have highly competent, I have the world's greatest dishwasher. But you would look at the organization and say, well, why is that important? You, you do not know how important that is. He, the guy's great, and he's, he's from Ecuador, and uh, he used to be a postmaster down there. And he does everything for me without being asked. And then I have others who don't. So you, you spend a lot of time just kind of working with people. The alone time comes, you know, in the morning and at night. Uh, well, I have two rules in, in, in what I think has helped us be successful that kind of undermines the alone time. One, we make all our food from scratch. We do about 98%. I buy French fries and chicken fingers because kids like those. And we've made those from scratch and the kids wouldn't eat them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also in the business a lot. Not all the time. We take, usually take Sundays off. But we're in the restaurant. I'll be there tonight and I go and I talk to almost every customer like on a regular basis. And if I didn't have regulars, the people who I've developed relationships with um, since we opened, you know, 14 years ago, um, there are nights that the place would be empty. Last night was a good example. It was Halloween. Did a lot of pizzas. It was a good night, but it was all takeout pizzas. But the dining room was full. And I think every person in the dining room is somebody who I know personally that's been coming to our restaurant for a long time. They're people I don't have to worry about. And if we burn something for them, it's, they're not the first people to go and yell about it on Yelp. <laughs> they ask for it to be remade, and so they're, they're, you get that going for you. So. Very good. Um, what's the most challenging aspect um, when you started to enter uh, being an entrepreneur? You said it wasn't actually making um, the beer, but then there's the business side, and you ha you both have business backgrounds. And let me ask you the question. So for somebody who wants to be an entrepreneur, they'll have maybe a passion about an industry or an art or something. But how important is it to know business? Well, it's hugely important to be passionate about it because you will be tested time and time again. And you have to be really excited about your products, your business, and the impact you're having and making sure that's fulfilling for you. Um, I'd say my best advice is to be very careful who you team up with and um, because the people you team up with ultimately, your accountants, your lawyers, your business partners are gonna be people who teach you things that you would have never seen coming outside of your area of expertise and help you see bumps down the road that were way out of your eyesight at the time. Um, that can be anything from regulatory hurdles that you have to prepare for long in advance before the inspector shows up at your doorstep or um, it could be mechanical equipment, um, but yeah, there. But in owning your own business, there are going to be unforeseen challenges every day. Like there are just days where like the chiller blows up and floods the parking lot, and you, it just happens. <laughs> so, yeah. One thing you both um, talked about are the relationships, the, the people that you rely on to help you create your vision. And I think that's something that we're trying to do here at Workspace, is create a space where people do work alone, but work together where they build relationships and why we do events like this, and why when I leave here, I'm gonna to go to a Chamber of Commerce uh, 
networking event. And it's whether you're looking for a job in a company um, as an employee and hopefully you'll move up through the ranks, or you're trying to build your own. It really is about relationships. And you talked about the importance of customer service. Um, and I believe you stand out because it's a rarity that you have that relationship with your um, customers. So we're gonna conclude on one more piece of advice for people. How do you do that? Because not everybody is a gregarious extrovert. Uh, and I taught in the business school at UConn and most of those people were introverted numbers people. So how do you find that balance? Yeah, yeah. one of the reasons I left Sodexo is because I was working with all those introverted finance guys. <laughs> for a while I was like, Jesus guys, can we go to someplace besides Burger King for lunch? Um, we're a food company. Um, I have good relationships with a lot of different people. Well, one, just a tip to, to uh, carry through on that thought about, about relationships. I have two accountants that work independently of each other. They go over my books all the time and they check each other. And they both have their kind of their niche. You know, one guy's sort of a tax guy and does all of our bills and the other guy does, um, you know, we'll call it investments and annual, you know, the annual stuff that goes to the government. I have three or four lawyers. I've been sued three times. Um, for some of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen in my life. Nobody's ever won. But when you get sued for the first time, you find out that you need a lawyer, and you need a lawyer. And you want to have one that, yeah, you want to have one that you can talk to that doesn't charge you $300 an hour just because you called them on the phone. So I, I spend a lot of time developing those relationships. I have a great relationship with the people in the town of Manchester. I'm on the Manchester Downtown Special Services District Board here that works downtown here, and we, we do a lot of the events, and we're going through a lot of changes right now. Um, and a lot of that, a, a lot of times, what I what I like about the relationship with the town of Manchester is people actually actually ask me for my opinion <coughs> about ideas, and and that's what makes me happy. When someone asks me what would you do downtown to make it better, you know, that's where you get you know, a lot of traction. But but uh, you know, I really like working. I think we have a good town too. We're lucky that we have a good town uh, and good people. So was that even close to the question? <laughs> But the, the answer was great, so it doesn't matter what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I, I am curious, though, as a non-alcoholic brewing company, because we're going to have different breweries here every um, every month, and they've been great, and some have been here in the town of Manchester. And I'm assuming there's a network of brewers since these craft breweries are popping up. So, how do you, as a non-alcoholic brew, fit into that click? Yeah, it's Connecticut's got an amazing craft beer community, and you guys in Manchester are growing a really good craft beer community specifically. Uh, we do have a Connecticut Brewers Craft Brewers Guild, um, but also people are great about having beer festivals where everyone comes and hangs out, um, and the community is incredible. People are just intellectual, curious, sharing, and a lot of brewers actually see our business as very complimentary and have our beer in their tap rooms and different stuff. So the community has been super open. Great. Yeah. And every brewer we've had, it's been fabulous. But and Connecticut's brewer, we've yeah. been, we're very lucky in Connecticut with who's chosen to set up shop here. So give a pitch for your tap room again. Yeah, we're just trying to make, no one's really done anything great in non-alcoholic beer in a long time, ever in the US, really. <laughs> and so we're just trying to make great tasting non-alcoholic craft beer for healthy and active adults. So. And what is your region? Are you planning to ship nationally? Uh, we do ship nationally on e-commerce for free, but we are in about 400 stores statewide in Connecticut. So, Congratulations, uh, four thank months. You. That's yeah. and, uh, so on our website, we've just got to find a store button, and then I'll show you the 10 closest stores to yourself. So. Very nice. So. Do you sell at Mulberry? Um, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of you. <laughs> we've already talked about how do I get your how do I get your stuff. So Excellent. And a pitch for Mulberry. Yep. Great food, great people. Yep. You know, um, I think we fit the town of Manchester. One, Manchester is extremely diverse. Um, and in today's, today's cultural world, I think that means a lot. And I think we've, we've worked very hard to target the people that live in Manchester with a food product or a program that, that matches up well with the people here in town. We're not too fancy. Um, we're certainly not formal. But, and our food is from scratch. And uh, so Mulberry is right down the street there. We're open every day but Monday. and. Um, we hope you'll come in and give us a try if you haven't before. Yeah, and Main Street is great, and we have parking on Main Street. We have the lots in the back that there's no limit in the evenings. So we hope you'll join us. And here at Workspace, in addition to the art gallery where this is taking place, it also um, acts as a meeting space or a 
party room. Uh, we've got two classrooms. One is currently being used by a graduate school uh, program. We have three conference rooms and we have about 48 coworkers who share the space either in one of our 12 private offices, our dedicated desks, or our co-working space. So come and visit, see what's happening at uh, the town of Manchester. And although this evening was free, if you would like to pay us back, word of mouth is the best. Uh, likes and, so, and shares on social media and just people who are either have their own business or working remotely. It's a, a great place to be a little bit more productive than some of us can be in front of our uh, homes, our dogs, our cable TV and things like that. So thank you for being here for Beer and Business. We will do it again the first Thursday of every month and uh, enjoy your time. Thank you. Thank you.